too long on this but just some real useful stuff so I think a few people have seen us using balls and stuff and it's a really effective way of starting to improve range of movement and we're going to go to some positions this morning um, particularly the muscle but we want, might want a little bit of overhead range of movement which might help too. so what I think we're going to do is quite a few of us we haven't got tons of kit we've got a bit that we can play around with so I'm just going to show you a few different things and then let's just have like 20 minutes or so just like dropping in and out and playing with a few bits and bobs um, so we'll start with the release balls. There's a bucket of balls here. We've got uh, the red ones. Are, you've got yours. Yeah. yeah. The red ones are ours. Um, so they're put back in there. But the rest of these ones, you can, go for, you can use these. But just make sure you're right. Right. <laughs> so effectively, just from a from a um, uh, application perspective, muscles get tight. They get knotted up. We get these adhesions of collagen forming around the muscle. And we create these little roadblocks and these little. Um, restrictions which stop the muscle from activating or, or sorry stop the muscle from lengthening what's effectively happening is we've got a little bit too much neural activation going to the muscle it's tight it's kind of cramping up it's the same thing as what happens if you go to a physio or a massage and they find those bits that hurt and they press on and those are the trigger points by trying to take some uh, put by applying pressure onto those trigger points we can get the brain to relax the contraction of the muscle a little bit so we're using um, the ball effectively like a massage masseuse's hand so we're interested in getting into the back of the shoulder or the last and posterior shoulder. We're going to have a look at a bit, look at the front of the chest. We're going to look at some T-spine mobilization on the, on the bars with the foam rolls, and then we're going to use the bar itself for a bit more of anterior shoulder and some bicep work. There's some pretty grotty stuff in here, and some of you are going to find that there's some pain. Anywhere where we've got pain is going to be an indication that the brain or the body is not very happy with it. So those are the things that we're looking for. So anything on a pain scale of 1 to 10, 6 and above is something which you want to give a bit of attention to. If you're doing something that doesn't hurt, that's a good thing. We actually don't want it to be sore, but the reality is that most of us who train and exercise are going to find that we've got some level of, of, um, uh, some level of pain within the muscle. So if it doesn't hurt, go and do something else. Just spend your time on the bits which are sore. So, First one, that easy ball is going to go on the back of the shoulder and it's literally like seek and destroy to find the point where it's sore. You might have got muscles jumping out of the way, feeling like it's a bit gristly, but anything which is feels stuck down, gritty, not very nice, just gently give it a little bit of a, you can just sit there, relax, allow your body to sink over it, don't tense up if it's super painful. Try and switch it off, sit into it, and you're just going to relax there, a minute or so, whatever. Level one is just to sit with the, with the shoulder, you can go overhead if you want to. Um, if you want to then get some range of movement and we can then start to rotate through position, just starting to move and grease that kind of pattern a little and bit. That, that rotation, that internal external rotation is very important for just your general health and movement of, of the shoulder and we should have it. Um, just like we tested and you could do a little bit, it'd be worth doing a little bit before you do your prep work now to see what works for you and what's helping. So just like we did that shoulders overhead, we can actually look at what's your internal and external rotation like there. Try it when you're on the floor as well. Can I actually relax, can I comfortably get my hand to the floor? External rotation. On your internal rotation, you're going to find it's not as far. It's not about, oh, look, well done, Jackie, touch the floor. Look where my shoulders go. So I've completely moved my shoulder blade and the head of my humerus forward and that's allowed me to reach. That, I am not actually into rotating the humerus any further, so that's my end of range. So can I, that feels a bit, got in a bit tight, can I do something to try and improve that in the next five, 10 minutes before I go into my muscle up, which is gonna require me to do that internal rotation. If I'm lacking that internal rotation in my muscle up, I might not then be able to do a muscle up, or I then really compromise here and then I'll end up in seeing the physio at some point, potentially. What would be the sort of optimal internal rotation? Is it 45? 45. 45. Whereas you like full? 90. 90 on the yeah, external. About 180 here, about 45. Same, 45, 75? 45. The range is uh, optimal. I'm looking at physio just to sense check that one. They'll, like, oh, they'll talk about the arc of, like, some people go further, the arc of total being 180. Yeah, the balance is actually more important. If you. Yeah. 
if we've got a ton of external rotation and like no internal rotation, it's worse than actually having like a bit of restriction in both. You actually kind of want, you know, we need a bit of balance across the range. So we can go, um, we'll show you another one, and probably a way more effective one for the internal rotation, which Jack will do in a minute. Um, it can go front arm, ball into the front of the shoulder, body down, arm behind the back, just get into any of that kind of horrible nastiness up in the front, not great. Um, particularly unpleasant this morning. Um, and then this one, I really like, it's pretty full on, but if you can get into anterior deltoid ball, this guy on the front of the shoulder. First time Tim got me to do this, about five years ago, I remember thinking, what on earth? So if you, if you test internal rotation here, and then spend a minute loosening it off, and then retest it, you can actually get some range fairly quickly. Um, but you can use the knuckle, you can use the, 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 the end of the barbell, you can use the main shaft of the bar, or you can use the knuckle of it, um, whichever is going to get in there. But it's a work on the top of the... Yeah, the fat a bit, less of, uh, more surface so that's not going to be as painful as when you put that bad boy right into there. But so you can tack down a little bit on pec, you can tack down a little bit more on your anterior delt, you can even take this down towards but sometimes bicep tendon will get really glued up, so actually coming down a little bit further onto the onto the bicep. But feel where it is for you. Do some work. Take it through range. Tack it down. Take it through the range. If you want a bit more pressure, put your knee on top. You can make with the other hand. Make sure it's not going to move, and take it through that range you're trying to get to. But the other thing that's nice about the barbell there is it's going to help you keep that shoulder down rather than just letting it. Pop up and go, oh, look how far I can go. Yeah. And then, last one, oh, I've got one more for the shoulder. This one I really like the T spine. So, our thoracic spine is this kind of portion of our, our spine, 12 vertebrae. It's going to be responsible for quite a bit of extension. If the thoracic spine isn't healthy, the shoulder's going to struggle to have good range of movement. So, this is a really nice mobilization exercise for those of us that spend too long sat at desk. That's what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. When we did on uh, Friday, when we were doing our back bridges and that sort of full flexion and that extension for T spine, if you felt tight through there, this is great for that. So, foam roll can sit into T spine. I'm going to take the bar over my head like a snatch grip and I'm just going to push my hips up. So I can get my bum to the floor if I just allow my ribcage to lift. But what I'm going to do is try and keep that ribcage packed in, just like we talked about with the hollow body. And now I'm going to try and take it through towards the ground. So the stretch is going to come through the shoulders, but it's also taking the pressure of the T-spine. And I can just move into different positions. Just be careful your head doesn't come miles. I'll just try and keep it relaxed in that neutral position. Push up, pull through, sit into that shape. Hips up, the vertebrae. You're going to feel it across here as well as working through the spine. Okay, so you're going to get a nice stretch across the front and see part of the shoulder. Stay away from pain. If it feels sore or uncomfortable, <coughs> don't hurt yourself. And the last one for you guys is just shoulders. Give yourself a hug. Get the shoulder blade out of the way. Get into any of that nastiness that you get in there. Again, just gently kind of like just tell them in the trap area. Yeah, yeah the trap. Wrong yeah. yeah. between the shoulder blades. So the when you just move the scalp yeah. out of the way. When you, when you hug yourself. My scaps are as sort of as far apart as possible. It opens up that tissue and get into them rather than mashing on your actual bone. All right, have a go. We might as well get some more kit out. We are doing some self myofascial release. It's day three, and things are starting to get a little bit grotty. And we're trying to mash away, prep up and loosen off some of these tight muscles so we can smash our last workshops for the rich uh, for the weekend workshop has been so far an absolute yeah, fucking well this is actually an advanced technique that looks a lot like lying down <laughs> you'd be wrong